Welcome to another episode of Searching for McGuffin with your host, George. Dan. Threw you off there, huh? Gabe. And Link. <laughs> <laughs> off to a great start. That threw me off. Why are you such an agent of chaos? Because sometimes you need to be. Honestly, my life is so order and structure. I and mean, is that a, that's, I don't mean that as a flex. I mean that as like it, it came off as a flex. The, the constraints of my life and, and my schedule are yeah, but tying a noose around my neck. But um, us people that don't have order and structure need order and structure. So when we have order and structure, you can't ruin it. I think I'm just taking advantage of the fact that you don't have a lot of order and structure right now as much as you are going to have in the next coming weeks. That is true. Yeah. Okay. What? Why? You start working, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like to think that we've been working all summer. That's right, baby. I wish my job required me to go to Iceland for <laughs> well, Europe yeah, well, for weeks. I went for the job. I went for work. You yeah. went for work? Yeah. Yeah. As an ordained minister for the Universal Life Church, I was required to go to officiate a wedding. You were ordained in the Universal Life Church? Of course. Yeah. Aren't you? Um, I think we're going to start adding that into the... It's in my links. resume. Yeah, we can, uh, Link can marry you. I can. And I went for work because the show paid for the trip for me. Also, he was my backup, just in case. Uh, I, what does that mean? If I couldn't officiate the wedding, it would have been you. Oh, I thought you were going to marry me and... And my sister? Your sister, yeah. No, that's for the 10-year anniversary, right? Oh, okay, yeah. You, that already um, happened. That was last year. You guys didn't renew your vows? We, it was in the middle of the pandemic. I would have done something. Well, it wasn't in the middle. It was after the pandemic, but it was like the planning. I had someone who was supposed to plan it. And then. Was it my sister? They fell off the face of the earth. No, why would she plan her own? Because his own women plan their own wedding? Well, they. Oh, it's a long story. Okay. Let's not get into it. My bad. Let it, let's get into the fact that your trip was paid for by this show? Yeah, yeah. It's just all tax deductible. I've just been using this as a Ponzi scheme. So. Like a shell corporation. We can do this? We'll talk about it off the air. Just just for the record, Internal Revenue Service, this is a comedy podcast, as Dan has established. So this is a joke. Damn it. But we're here to celebrate the end of summer. Is that something to celebrate? Oh. New life. Right? That's fall. Right. But Isn't things, that spring? Things die, <laughs> but things die in the fall. Things so, die. How is that new you know, life? <laughs> new you life. know. <laughs> new life, they fall. By the way, actually, you would have thrown us more off by saying your name since it hasn't been said things in the show intro. fall apart. I yeah. said it two weeks ago. I wasn't here. No. Two weeks ago, we didn't have one because you threw us out of order again. Th- that, that's right. None of that is accurate, but what? Yeah, it is because he goes. Because I remember I was there. He got me again. He's gonna say, "Oh, that was two weeks what? ago." Ah, uh, you thought I was going to say that? Yeah, that was two weeks ago. Yeah, I, bet I said again. my name. Yeah, but not everyone on the episode was able to introduce themselves. So now no one knows who's who in that episode. It's all part of the chaos. It's all mm. part of the plan. What are we talking about today? We're talking about the end of season two. And the end of summer. The ending of summer. And the end of this show? For the season. For uh, Sure. Maybe. Not forever. Okay. Because we know you guys need us. That's, do they? And we need them. Us. We need this oh, we for need the IRS. Them, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I need to. I don't know where I'm going next summer. Exactly. So <laughs> we need to keep the show going. No must go on. So, it's been a big summer. Mostly, it's mostly been movies. TV's been sparse, right? Anime's been sparse. Gaming, there hasn't been a lot of new stuff. Yeah, gaming has some good stuff. I've been catching up. Oh, yeah, gaming has this. I guess we'll talk about it. Which I think is a trend. Like, do you think that's because, you know, it's summer, people have more time and can go to the movies more frequently and just be able to invest that time while TV is kind of year round? And that adds to structure yeah, it feels in like people's TV lives. TV takes a break during the summer. Yeah, I think Cause traditionally, they know, right? Yeah, because they know people are gone. Viewership goes down. It's true. Viewership does go down. Um, People are tra- like traveling, vacationing, and then it's like, oh, like if you want to catch a movie, it's not like a long commitment. We have to sit here for like eight hours. Yeah. So people are moving around a lot. So exactly. They're not watch- in front of a TV. Yeah. Unless you're watching Oppenheimer. Ironically, I think I catch up on TV during the summer. But I, obviously, as an educator, my schedule is a little different. I have yeah. a lot more free time because I am still traveling, but also catching up. 
mm -hmm. with stuff. But yeah, yeah. I mean, viewership for this too, uh, for podcast, like you, a lot of podcast shows go on break during the summer. Uh, uh, not us. Yeah, not us, because we're here for you. We're professional. I don't think that makes them less professional. Mm. Less committed. Uh, that's fair. We're more committed. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you hear that, Joe Rogan? We're more committed than you. Does he go on breaks? I don't know. I don't actually. know either, yeah. I don't think so because I think he uses it as a Ponzi scheme and a shell corporation mm. for, to pay for his trips. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, we might go on a longer break with TV and movies. Now oh, that because that's of the strike. writer's strike and yeah. actor strike. That's right. Return to, to tradition. In fact, that's a big topic I think we're going to handle when we come back for season three in the weeks slash months to come. So, and that might shape that conversation for a while if it lasts as long as some people are predicting that it will um you know what i think that the only one that actually benefits from these writer strikes are late night talk show hosts how so because i don't know at least last time when they were on a writer strikes conan was on a roll conan was like the best thing that happened to tv during the the writer strike. How does that work when they're on a writer strike and he still has a show? He has to come up with his own material. Like, but he's not allowed to write. He, I think, he can't plan without writers. So he has to come up with some people. Maybe assistants help yeah. him out. How come he gets to write though? Isn't he part of the not writing? Just guild? planning what they're oh, going to so, do. So, like for example, so one of the had, things Conan would do was on his desk he would spin a penny and see how many seconds it could go. Okay. On live, on not that's on TV. A, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. Well, is it? It's still recorded before a live studio. Yeah, audience, a live yeah. studio audience. Also, we got Conan versus Colbert versus John Stewart. And what were they doing? They were just fighting over each other because they were claiming that someone created Mike Huckabee at that time. Okay. Did they figure out who created Mike Huckabee? Mike Huckabee. That's a name you probably haven't heard in, in a while, right? Dude, I forgot about that. Um, no, they just ended up all fighting. They actually had a brawl, and okay. they both, all three of them. Got knocked out by each other. Very interesting. Do you Very entertaining. I recommend watching it. It was like my favorite. Like, I loved it. So I'm like, we should get another ride of strikes if it means we're going to get this. But I know people need to get paid. So yeah. I don't want that to happen. So let's talk about the things that did get to come out before whatever big strikes. shutout. Yeah. And I have to. We talked a little bit about a couple of weeks ago uh, the July films. Some of the best films that were coming out for the summer. We want to elaborate on that. Yeah, movies that we thought were going to be awesome, right? What we yeah. predicted, movies we were excited about, right? Yeah. Mm. How how did that turn out? You thought? Do you think they were as awesome as you expected them to be? I think the three movies that we expect were excited for were Mission, Mission Impossible, Impossible, Barbie, and Oppenheimer. Yep. Right. Those were the three big movies for July. Okay. Which one was your favorite of the three? Oof. I'm going to go with Oppenheimer. Gabe? He's just going to... I thought hard. it was going to be Barbie yours? for me. For me, it's Oppenheimer. Yeah, I thought it would be Barbie for you, too. Me, too. Um, That's Oppenheimer, but I'm going to say Barbie. Okay, okay. What a feminist. But you just said <laughs> it's Oppenheimer. Like, I just... It's just two different... It's like two different points, I think. It's just... Barbie's so much fun. Like Barbie made me laugh. Barbie made me had a good time, and Barbie had a good message. Oppenheimer is just cinema, a feat in in filmmaking. And like me being such like a a a big film, a like a a, a, a lover of film. I don't like that term. A what cinephile? a cinephile! A cinephile, because it sounds like yeah, you make love to movies. Don't you? When you watch a movie? No, I do not. Mm. No, no, I'm asking. Oh, don't it we was just a, just a fair. Don't we all? No, we don't all do it. No. Um, yeah, but I mean, I think in reality we won. We all won. Yeah, I thought it would. I thought it would fall into this like Barbie, Oppenheimer, Mission Impossible. Is that fair? Because I was really like that's what I thought. Mission Impossible. No, Oppenheimer, Mission Impossible. I could see it going either way here. But for me, I was like Mission Impossible. Like I love these movies, and I I thought it was I, I thought it was just great. But for you, I thought it would be Oppenheimer because like Nolan, you and it, yeah, Nolan. It's just you're all in. So Nolan, you're all in. You're all in, Nolan, because you're a cinephile. 
Yeah. Pause. <laughs> so, um, let's just get right to it. Did someone take over because my wife keeps calling me right now. Oh, nice. Tell her we Can say we hi. Tell her that we are professional podcasters and that we don't pick up the phone. Oh, great. Um, your car died? No. You got in a car accident? No. I need Gabriel to move your car. Why are you always blocking my car, man? Oh, that's a good point. Um, we stop doing that. There's parking spaces. In the... It was raining, so I'll give him that. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. And what you, what are we doing right when now? When it rains here, Do we have it to stop? floods. Do we have to stop? No, we can continue the conversation. Okay, we Gabriel. just Gabriel exits and then we. All right. This is the first, right, for our podcast? Yeah, I think this is our first, yeah. Yeah, it was exciting. All right, so let's, really quick, let's move on. You and me can discuss the films, and Gabriel can come in and just repeat all the same let's stuff. Let's discuss all the things that Gabriel wanted to talk about okay, while yeah. he was gone. <laughs> so, he was gone. Gabriel found a way to get off the show, <laughs> even when he's on the show. Okay. But really quick, I, I think one of the things that we can talk about is that um, one last week's episode, it was Danny and I, we, we were playing Stardew Valley. Oh, yes. Yes. So if you were able to watch that or hear it, I recommend no, watching it. There's no, there's no audio version of it. So. Yeah, because it makes no sense. Yeah. It may, <laughs> we'll, we'll watch the video. We're like, there's no reason yeah. we should put up the audio. All right. So, yeah. So Danny and I have been playing Stardew Valley this summer, and we thought, oh, would it, it'd be a cool idea to just record ourselves play. So our episodes come out on Mondays and Fridays. So if you're ever down and watch people play Stardew Valley, have a cozy night in drink some hot cocoa go watch us yeah it was interesting to see you guys like play the game together and i think you guys did a really good job so if you listen to the show and were wondering why there wasn't an episode it's on video so go ahead and check us out on youtube if you haven't and uh last week's episode is the i guess the pilot of that series yeah when do you guys plan to continue no we've been re doing this this whole time yeah oh, okay so monday and friday so i believe maybe an episode drops today i mean I don't know when time travel yeah, works. Yeah, time travel, yeah. <laughs> but, but yes, go watch it. Um, I think you guys will enjoy it. 30-minute episodes, I believe, so not too much. Something that you can watch while you're in the bathroom pooping or working out. Yeah, easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. Exactly. Like all of us are. All right. So um, anything that you might have seen that probably me and Gabe haven't seen before we get back to that? So I think the one show I watched this summer that I – I mean, there was two shows that I absolutely loved. One of them we'll talk about. But one that caught me by surprise, and I'm a little bit late to the game, is a show called Detroiters. Okay. Have you heard of it? No. It's with Sam Richardson, the guy from Veep. Sam Cook. No, Sam Richardson. Okay. Tim Smith. Tim, man, what's the guy's name? Tim. Meadows. Tim Meadows. No, the guy. From Star Wars. The guy from I Think You Should Leave. So they have this show called the Detroiters, and it's one of my. It that became was one quick. of. My, that was yeah. That was insanely you're fast. Like, you're like flash. Yeah, we didn't even get through one topic. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. It became one of my favorite shows because it's the comedy is so like random. So I I ended up loving it. I Good didn't know they Gabriel, still made comedies. They don't. It's an old one. Oh. Okay. From Comedy Central that's on Paramount Plus. Good thing Gabriel pays for Paramount Plus. Do you think? Thank you. I mean, what was all, that? What was that thing you were saying about being professional? Podcasters? We're professional podcasters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that leave in the middle of the yeah. show. <laughs> I have seen that happen. I have seen children come in during some people do their show live, so there's no way around. But that's it. adorable. That'd be fun. Yeah. Maybe this is our children coming in. Yeah. What's on Paramount Plus? Detroit. Detroiters. So it's a comedy I watch. Detroit summer. Become Human. Oh, you did put it on the other day. Yeah, it's hilarious. I love that show. So okay. check it out. How old is it? I believe 2019, 2020. Okay. So that's one show I watched on my own. And if you're a fan of Dirty Rock, I think you'll like the show. Okay, cool. It's a little bit sillier than Dirty Rock, but yeah. All right, let's move through uh, M.I. Barbenheimer really quick because we've talked about it a lot this yeah. month. So just real quick, I had already seen it when we discussed it earlier in the month in our summer movie preview. Go back and check those out if you haven't. But what did you guys think? Of what? Uh, Mission, well, Impossible. Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible? Oh, I loved it, man. I, those movies are always great. I never know what I'm going to get myself into because I always forget to watch the movies. So it's like I'm watching a, a new franchise all the time. <laughs> you, are you never confused, like, characters? Yeah, but I have Gabriel like, next to me, so oh, I ask okay. questions. He's like a compendium for you? Exactly. <laughs> I, think, I think it's crazy. Like, that's, like, one of the franchises that, like, every movie that comes out just somehow just is arguably better. Oh, yeah. 
like yeah, it just fair. keeps on getting better like because like you think about it you like i think i saw mission Impossible 2 before i saw one but mission Impossible 2 is like it's silly it's like it's very it's like it's a moment in time yeah and i think i just like i, I have very fun memories but like you watch and you get older like critically it's like wow <laughs> train wreck but train wreck yeah really but have you seen that movie recently no like i watched that and i'm like i mean i love this but still like i i personally don't like Michelle i remember the though. the rock climbing yeah that part's cool that's like the first scene yeah that's, that's the, all i remember in the mask <laughs> yeah there's a reason why that's all. no the mask is just every Michelle no no no, no like it's just really dramatic do they even have like like a key mask scene in that one yeah, yeah. they do yeah what? He, when he's jumping he puts off the his, plane no no <laughs> he puts his mask over the 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 villain's henchman yeah and the villain thinks he's oh, yeah, killing he Tom kills, Cruise. He kills his, and he jumps off the plane. He kills Ethan. And then, and then he cries. No. And he then like cry. he takes off the mask. And then like Tom Cruise is just running in slow motion like and with his long trench coat. Lo- and he jumps like off this. the plane. And with his hair flowing off. What? You're naming other Mission Impossible What are you Impossible talking about? No, there's a Mission Impossible. I think it's two because I've that's the only one I remember. Uh-huh. Where they're in a, there's a plane scene. Yeah. And they push someone off the plane with a parachute thinking, how oh, I got you. It turns out it was not the right person. Did that ever right happen? Person. I just watched them all. I can't. That doesn't seem like a real. What? Thing. I think you're thinking of Harrison Ford in. Nope. Uh, nope. Cl- uh, clear and Present Danger. No, I've never seen that. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. wait Air Force say it again? One. There is a scene where they're in an airplane, right? Tom Cruise is fighting someone. Someone gets a parachute and they jump off the plane. Turns out it was the wrong person. Like they had a <laughs> mask on. I just saw like seven of them. Bro, I remember this. <laughs> this is a false. So that memory. has to be like Mandela Reacher or effect. something. Nah. No, why would? Because only time, only Mission Impossible has the mask. It's in the Air song Force thing. One. Harrison Ford no, kicks I, Gary Oldman. No, nope, the- no, nope, Tom Cruise is in it. <laughs> this happened. Oh no, he's talking about the beginning of Mission Impossible Two with the scientist, and the villain is dressed as has a mask as Tom Cruise. Oh, it's in the airplane. Yeah. And then but they don't kick a guy off the airplane. No, but like, someone hop. jumps off the airplane. Yeah, they yeah. all jump off the airplane to yeah. get off, and then you realize it's not Tom Cruise. It's yeah. not Ethan Hunt. See? Bam. You, you didn't describe that accurately, but sure. Hey, I got there at the end. You know when the last time I watched that movie? I was eight, nine. Pretty good memory. Yeah. Honestly, I was th- when I started watching, I was when I started watching Mission Impossible 2 and that happened, I was like, I don't remember this. But I do. <laughs> See? backflip click anyways highly recommend mission impossible if anyone hasn't seen it but there's a little bit of controversy actually in, in this movie yeah the director of um uncharted the movie oh claimed that he he got upset because of the train sequence if you've seen in the trailers or if you've seen the film there's a scene where they have to escape from one rail car to another as mm-hmm. it collapses comes down the bridge and that is literally the beginning of Uncharted 2, the game. So now the director of the Uncharted movie is like, what am I supposed to do? He was, uh, a, he was upset or he was yeah, like... He, was, he, was, he didn't make a big brouhaha about it. He was like, he was good about it. But, but I said some term of like flattery. Was, yeah. Flattered. Well, but like also like hinting. Frustration. Like, yeah. yeah, because it was like, that was his big set piece to start Uncharted 2. And now like, how are you going to... It's an iconic moment from the games. And now... He can't start the because there's moments where they're like hanging on and moving to the other. It's like almost shot for shot, exactly like that set piece. And I don't know. Good to know that the writer of Mission Impossible played Uncharted Uncharted too. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. right. Imitation is the sincerest sincerest form of flattery. flattery, Yeah. Yeah. Um. And then what was the other one? Oh, it's not making. That's that fine. Game. You know what? Don't make Uncharted movies. How about that? <laughs> that is fair. It's going to be like games. Uncharted 1. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they can stop themselves, though. There is someone in Unch- Uncharted 1 that's a cameo. Who is it? There is the guy who voices Nolan North, the voice of. Um, yes. I don't know why I thought of that. I'm sorry. Nathan Drake. Yeah. Um, I thought it was great. Mission- I thought Mission Impossible was great. I think. Go watch it. It's not doing that well in the theaters anymore yeah warner brothers no it's not doing that well warner really messed it up man that was a terrible time to <laughs> put that movie out yeah should have done it in june yeah they should have done it in june they should have they should have done it with flash I, I think they were scared but they could have killed flash flash didn't die on its own um i don't know who killed flash 
Warner Brothers oh. by releasing Who killed Flash's Ezra mom? Miller killed Flash. That's true. Who killed Flash's mom? Ezra Miller. That doesn't make any sense. If man. you watch the movie, you still don't it know. It doesn't make sense. Does it make sense because I haven't watched it? <laughs> what also doesn't make any sense is that Jamie Lannister's in that movie for no reason. Who? Jamie La- Um. Where? He's the guy that's like eating a hot dog and then Flash takes it. Flash steals it. Who, who is that? He's from Game He's of in Thrones. Game of Thrones. Is it the little kid? No, the it's the blonde, the lo- blonde with the long hair. The guy oh, the guy who sleeps with his sister. Yes. Oh, don't know that. But it's like, he's that. like a pretty big name and like you just put him like in a random cameo, which makes me think he would have been, would have been Thon. Oh, that's true. So people watch a show where a guy sleeps with his sister? Yeah, they're bad guys. The world. They're bad guys. Not me. But then they turn into good guys. But then they turn into bad guys. When oh, does they... she turn into a good guy? That's fair. <laughs> Anyways. I think um, you're supposed to feel bad for her. Shame. Shame. No. She's evil. Like, I. that sucks, but like. Maybe don't Anyways. sleep with your brother. Maybe. No, definitely don't do that. Don't. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I give it a. I give it a nine. Oh, I give it. A high oh high. yeah, I'd give it a nine as well. Nine point two. Nine. A nine point three. I give it a nine point three. I I would agree with that. Okay. Um, I thought we were using whole numbers. Just for the for the record, no, Link never. Link, uses yeah, whole. yeah, I like my points. Um, it's making it's making money, but it's just the movie just costs too much money to make. It is a lot. That, that's mm. what the thing is. Um, moving on, Barbie. What'd you guys think? I really enjoyed it. Um, I I expected more. That's why I thought it was going to be the one I loved the most. Okay, okay. So, that, that, I'm glad you said that. What did so, you expect? And that's not like in a negative way. I don't know. Way, I expected. Just... I have no idea what I expected. I thought it was going to be a little bit funnier, a little bit more. I It's missing something for me. That's only, some, that's only a scale that I myself can add to it. I don't, so I can't describe it. So that's why I was like, mm, I don't know. It doesn't feel like a Greta Mook completely like a Greta movie to me. Like Lady Bird, Francis Ha, or or Little Woman. I think she's moving in this direction though. But I mean, is it because she's going mainstream? Yeah. And I and I heard it, that it's intentional that like she that doesn't want to be the indie darling. She wants to be a big mainstream director. Okay. You can do that, but you're if you're able to handle it well, if she's yeah. able to handle it well and which, ba- which balance a, balance it. But I really like what she she brings to the picture. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see part of that in these in this movie. However, I loved it. Like I thought it was a great yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. I just had higher expectations because to me, and I, I don't. Maybe this will help explain it a little bit. But to me, Little Woman and Lady Bird. No, no, Little oh, Woman. Oh, Francis, huh? No, Little Woman and Jojo Rabbit have a similar feel. Oh, okay. I thought you were to gonna it. go with the Greta movie. <laughs> no, no, because those those movies came out the same year, and they, right. those were my two favorite movies of that year. Okay. But they have a similar feel. What is that? I don't know. It's like a coziness to it, but. It's also funny. Comedy. I can't explain. Gabe's like, face as he tries to figure out what Jojo Rabbit there and is Little co- Women have they, in common. There is a coziness to uh, both of them that I can't. I don't know. There's a charm. There you go. A charm. I, yeah. I think so. You get that you get from the characters. Yeah. Here I didn't see that charm. I don't know. Gabe. But I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was great. Men. Am I right? We rule the world, baby. <laughs> see, and Cowboys. I Cowboys. I don't think that was the point of the movie. Um. I think that the movie was good. No, I, that was. I'm not saying that was the point of the movie. I'm saying that was the point for. No, but he is because Link's opinion. Link is like, yeah, baby, <laughs> who they do rule the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> horses, <laughs> patriarchy. Um, <laughs> I thought I thought the message was good. I thought it could be a little heavy handed, like as in like directly explaining the like exposition dumps. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Rather than showing, which it does a good job of. Yeah, showing it wasn't. Too. It wasn't as subtle. Yeah, it wasn't as subtle, which makes it like a real grown-up movie, I think. Not because of um, like content or maturity or anything, but it was just like, I don't... It was fun for an adult mm-hmm. who grew up playing with Barbies, but I don't know if it's like... I don't know how fun it is for like a younger audience. Did you, you know? grow up playing with Barbies? I, I, I technically did because... Yeah, what do you think the wrestlers... Who do you think the wrestlers' girlfriends were? That's right. I don't know, because I never had... My cousin had... Um, like all the Barbies and the Barbie Dream House, and I had all the wrestlers, the mm. big rubber ones from the eighties. Oh, okay. So they were like the same size. Mm. So and it's true what the Barbie movie says that like you don't really the girls don't really buy the Ken dolls. Yeah. Like she had one. I don't remember That's all you need, though. him being around. No, because you have like fifty Barbies. Barbies and you're playing house. 
So th all the husbands were like my wrestling figures. And we had this whole thing where like Barbie was with Macho Man, but he was very jealous of her because Hogan would look at her. And that's basically the Barbie movie. Yeah. And Isn't also, that real life? Yeah. That's basically what happened with Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that a storyline? Yeah. yeah. So it was like, you know, I don't know which one influenced which one, but. Art imitating life. Yep. Art imitating life for sure. So I did think it was like, it was super funny. And especially I think the big, the big uh, Ken number at the end. Oh yeah. One of the highlights. It was one of the highlights for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's definitely worth watching. I um, recommend it. Yeah. I think it's really, I think it was really good. But like you said, I thought she was going to bring like sensibility to the blockbuster and it feels like a blockbuster, mm -hmm. which is cool. Like in Mission Impossible, you know what a Mission Impossible movie is going to feel like and you expect that. Yeah. There's nothing charming or cozy about Mission Impossible. Yeah. So I guess Barbie has that too. And as long as you know, like it's a big blockbuster movie that <laughs> there's also this kind of like irony of the fact that it kind of subverts the idea that Barbie just exists to sell toys but then at the end of the day, this movie just exists to sell toys. So I don't know. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't, what? I don't know. I don't know if that. What do you mean? Well, like basically, is Barbie more than just a toy to sell for kids? And I think the movie kind of like explores that. Like, what what does Barbie really mean in our society? But at the end of the day, this movie was made just to sell some more Barbies. You know, it's it's just a marketing tool. Yeah. By Mattel. It's a good one, you know, but... You think this is going to create a universe where Mattel starts to now make movies about their pr oh, yeah. franchises, their, their IPs? Yeah. They, what do they do? Hot Wheels? Oh, that's what, what you got from it? What do you mean? Uh, that's what I got from that it. That it's just... No, it's a... We that it's just a marketing? Like a very good marketing? Scene? That that's what I got from the movie? Yeah. No. The movie explores Barbie being more than just a toy, right? Uh-huh. She's a figure... For young girls and women to look up to and they see themselves, their expectations into Barbie and Barbie, you know, kind of like reflects those back to them. No, the movie shows how these kind of icons, the kind of things that we talk about every week on the show, mm -hmm. like how they're more than just what they are. But at the end of the day, now, now speaking, speaking outside of the movie, Mattel made this movie to sell Barbies. To sell Barbies. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like. The idea of the movie is it's more than just a toy, but the only reason the movie exists is because it's just a toy. Yeah. It's just money. And now this is going to give them this is going to give them an an opportunity to sell more toys. Yeah, they are. They were selling Barbies at the theater, at the movie theater. They were selling the Barbie car like twice as much as it cost at Toys R Us. Popcorn bucket. Yeah, the popcorn bucket. Like, and and Barbie's sales are going to go through the roof. Because this movie was a huge success and like good for them because the movie's good. But is it just a marketing? It's a marketing tool. Like, luckily, we got an amazing cast and a great director to create a film that actually has something to say. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there was going to be a Barbie movie no matter what. You think they're going to get lazy now and start putting anyone to be to work on the other IPs? If they're smart, P put someone to put like on Polly Pocket, <laughs> work on. <laughs> Yeah, I even heard that that might be a rumor. Is that real? Really? I don't know if it's. A... Oh, but the, you yeah, heard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, they, Lily Collins. Lily is gonna, Collins. Is, is, like that, yeah. Is going to be Polly Pocket. Okay. So you see, they're creating the Mattel universe. The Mattel -verse? cinematic universe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Will they cross over? Polly Pocket and Barbie for sure. What about Bratz? Bratz is that Mattel? I I don't know. I don't think. I so. don't think Bratz and Barbie. Would However, be the same. I saw that. The girls. Bratz has like a whole TV series though. Yeah, anyway. the Bratz. You you know you know that scene where Mar where Barbie goes to the school and there's the four girls there. Cool. The, yeah. They're named after the Brat dolls. What? Like they really? give them the names. Yeah. Oh man, maybe this movie's way deeper than I thought. This movie is like you gotta know your history. Not know, but like at least it's gonna make you look stuff up. Let me tell sure. you. You know one good thing that Greta did was the kind of history that she dug up. To include in the movie is like I don't even believe it sounds like a joke, but they're just real things. Yeah, real dolls and real things that happen. I was I was impressed. I think it won me over with the Snyder Cut joke. Yes, yeah, that was good. Yeah, we stand for. I, I appreciate the meta of the of the movie. Mm -hmm. Loved it. All right, um, I give it an eight. Oh, that's right, we're scoring it eight. Mm -hmm. Oh. I give it an. 
I'll give it a nine. That's, gi- but also Mission Impossible is going up. Yeah, I want to give it an eight point five because I can you... I can understand eight point five. Yeah, yeah, eight point five. I'll so. give it an eight point five. Yeah, okay, makes sense. You don't want to go eight point six or eight point four? No. Okay. All right. So, Oppenheimer. Not to d- dwell too much on it, as I know we. We don't have three hours. No, we do not have three hours. But you have to have three hours, to and a half, you. and travel, if you're gonna go watch Oppenheimer. What did you guys think of Oppenheimer? If you could only watch one movie this summer, what would it be? What would you recommend for someone? I think it depends on the person. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. It could be either of these three movies. It could be either of these three. Yeah. We don't know if Ninja Turtles could be one of those. Ooh, we're hearing great things. We're hearing great things. We're excited. It comes out yesterday when this episode comes, drops. Yeah. But like in or a couple the day, of days. Or the day it comes out. Drip oh, you're there. right. It drops out today yeah. when this episode go watch, drops. Go watch That's it. Right. We're watching it the day before. Yeah. So are you going to that? Yeah, I just canceled my ticket, but I got to get it oh, again. Okay, so you're going to sit by yourself again. Right. Mm. Anyways, um, Oppenheimer's my recommendation, I think. This yeah. is a great film. I think it's an accessible film, too. Because for a three-hour biopic, I think it's its pacing is really good. Yeah. Actually, Gabe had some questions about the pacing early on. I, I jumped in. 15 minutes late in the movie because I got there late. Yeah, but I think I did a good job just summarizing. Yeah. So it was... Um, How many times have you watched it? No, just once. Just once? Oh, you got to watch it again then. I do. <laughs> I have to watch it again too. I want to watch it in IMAX. We watched it in Dolby. The sound was incredible. You were saying the pacing. You watched it in Dolby again? No, I watched it in IMAX. IMAX? Oh, you watched it a second? How yeah. was that? Oh, you went up to Fort Lauderdale? He went to Orlando. In Orlando. Oh, wait. So where'd you go? No, so 70 then, millimeter? You watched it in IMAX or 70 millimeter? No, he watched it with Julian the, showing the... And right? was it in 70 millimeter? Yeah. It was in film? It wasn't digital? I don't know. It was, it was in 70, uh, 70 millimeter. It was I mean, digital. So. It was, I, don't, then, I, don't think I watched that. it in 70... The, at, the, the aspect ratio was 70 millimeter. No, no, no. That's not what that aspect... The aspect ratio isn't... Doesn't mean the... No, I know. You watched it in IMAX aspect ratio. It was 70 millimeter, but I don't know if it was laser or actual no, film. It's probably laser. Yeah, 70 millimeter I know. is the film type. Yes, you know? but it's still shot like... Yeah, because yeah. it's shot with IMAX cameras. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you ro- you saw it in IMAX, but not in 70 millimeter. I don't know what I saw. Okay. It was 70 millimeter. I'm telling it was you, in the aspect you ratio. saw it in IMAX laser. That's what you saw, oh, the my. format that you saw it. It is not 70 millimeter. I don't like it. Should be a ticket, <laughs> but whatever. Um, I, sh- I showed... I sent a picture of what the 70 millimeter listing looks like. It says... IMAX 70 millimeter. Isn't that what it what no. I bought? No, no, you saw IMAX laser. 70 millimeter. <laughs> okay. I thought the movie was amazing. There's only 30 70 millimeter IMAXs in the entire country. And we don't have any? We have one Fort Lauderdale. Lauderdale. And that's, that's a real one. That's the real one. Is that A-list? No. Like you were telling me the, the whole process of having to like get there early and find a good seat and all that stuff. And I'm like, that's right. How they, times have changed. Yes, man. because it is not reserved seating. That is insane. For what? For the 70 millimeter. Oh, Remember when we right. used to do that, man? We used yeah. to line up to get good seats. That oh, were we like, used to line up for hours. And I look back now at my life and I was like, the amount of hours I have spent in line wasting, like, we could have started the show years ago. Some of those times were good, though. It's true. The bonding, like, in the line and waiting anticipation. Particularly, like, the, the one for, like, what, the Wii? Yeah. Well, that's different. Cause that, that was, like, crazy. to make money. That was, like, basically getting paid. And it was, like, an experience. Tents and everything. You know? Oh, yeah. We, we, we waited in the line to get the Wii the whole yeah. night. But I waited an hour and a half to watch The Matrix Reloaded. So, mm. for every good story, there's a terrible yeah. story. Um, I love this movie. Pacing, pacing. Pa- oh, pacing was... Yeah, I just felt like it was really fast but i mean it makes sense it's a three-hour movie with that much information like you can't yeah you can't <laughs> it's like, like a 25 hour book it's there is no low i understood that, that i understood at the end and then it's like not getting into too many not really getting to spoilers but like <laughs> spoilers of uh, he drops a bomb i mean he creates a bomb that the u.s then drops in but, japan so. but i think that no but i think the movie's more than that that is true um and i think that's the part that that i guess you know really wrapped it around for me yeah was because Nolan has this way of like telling two stories at once and then you mean three in this one three and then like in the climax like he kind of brings it all together why is it three three is I would say you can do three movies in this one because the first one is him 
the beginning, him, right? With the... The Oppenheimer origin story? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the second one, it's there's a, another movie. in The it. Trinity Test? The Trinity Test. And then... The we, aftermath? We, yeah, of it, which uh, I didn't think we uh, were going to get an hour and a half of that. Yeah. I mean, I, I did not know anything about that, to be honest. Yeah, that, yeah that's the part that's illuminating. Yeah, even <clears> the, the Oppenheimer story rather than the, you know, you think about the bomb and you kind of create this man's identity around this singular event. But it's interesting because they don't even depict the bomb, really. Right. And I'm actually, I think that was a I right, like that they I think that was the right decision. It, yeah. Yeah. it is the right decision because it's not about the bomb. It's about him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and his consequences with creating it. Yeah. And it's almost like, it's interesting because the Trinity test, which is when they first test the, you know, the bomb to see if it, you can actually do it. That's kind of the, the, the climax of his initial journey. And he doesn't, he's not the one who decides to drop the bomb. So then the back half, that third act is more like his response to this event outside of himself. Yeah. You know? And I thought it was brilliantly structured, brilliantly directed. I mean, cause it's also from, from his perspective and you know, how he, well, how Nolan decided to depict that and, and show it. And it's like, he wasn't there when it happened. Mm -hmm. And like, he's like, they show him videos and footage of the things that happened. And they don't, they don't show that. They don't show what, what they're showing them on the, on the monitor, but he's, he can't even look. Yeah. And that just like adds to the, like you have to use your, you have to kind of use Wait, your imagination you for about? it to be that, but. When, the actual footage of the um, atomic bomb. Like how they were charred, how the bodies were like affected. Oh, and stuff oh like that. Okay. Oppenheimer sees these things, but we're not privy to what he sees. Okay. We see him seeing. We oh, see I, his. I, we see his reaction. I thought you to meant it. the way that he makes movies. No, because that's no. what he does. He he doesn't let the actors see themselves in the in the camera. So they're just going off of what they think. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. TikTok uh, baby. We... <laughs> um, yeah. No, I think this is probably his best film. I agree. I think this is the one that gives him best movie. Best director. I can see it happening. I'm, I am pulling for Dune, though. Yeah, it might not come out this year. Well, then. Everyone nah, wins. It's supposed to be November, right? Yeah. So if it gets delayed, it'll hit. It'll it'll be out of the January window, right? For February. Yeah, it might not be eligible I think this year. Dune might be too mainstream for the Academy. I think this is I don't Oscar know. bait for them, I think. I don't know. Well, did, how, how did Dune 1 do? It didn't get nominated for Best Picture, but it got nominated for some stuff, special effects, right. audio. So maybe Dune 2 will do it. It wasn't Best Picture? I don't think it was no. nominated for Best Picture. No. But if this might do it, though. After seeing I this, mean, they have a director that can do you Yeah, know. and after the success I think he got. I think he got snubbed for not being in the director category. Denise Villanueva? Villanueva. Denis Villanueva. Yeah. Okay, how do you pronounce Denis that? Denis Villanueva. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, I think so too, but that, well, I don't know. I don't know because he gave us an incomplete movie because he gave us the first part. You get me? I think yeah. I think they might be waiting to see the, like how's doing exactly. too. But also at the same what? time, here's the thing: you can have up to ten best picture nominations, but you only five, have five, five directors, directors. Yeah, and it's not like the five there didn't deserve to mm -hmm. be nominated. So it's just it's just a crapshoot who who votes for what you know and where mm -hmm. those numbers get distributed. Um. Any last thoughts on Hoppy? I really enjoyed this movie. I, to me, it didn't feel like three hours. Mm -hmm. I think what I like the most about this movie is the score. I think this might be Ludwig's best uh, composure. <laughs> I don't know what the word you... You just said score, yeah. Yeah. I think that, uh, set of compositions? Yeah, I, I think yeah. this is his best. This is him at his best. Um, and it's cool seeing how long, how far he's gone from... You know, doing community all the way to this, which I think will win him an Oscar. By the way, he works with Childish Gambino. That's right. Lot, right? Yeah. So you think he'll be on the Lando show? No, Maybe. I think Lando's so. Lando's going to write. Yeah. Dune, gonna Dune write. was nominated for Best Picture. Oh, well, thank Fact the, checking us, right? The, you know, the, the, snub, the snub was the was Best Director. Right he was, not, I was nominated for Best Picture? Who else was nominated for Best Picture? That Spielberg. Um, <laughs> what? I'm going to name... The rest, and then I'm going to tell you the last one. Okay. Jane Campion, which who subsequently won for yeah. Power of the Dog. Uh, Power Ken of the Dog. Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh. Um, I can see why you made Belfast. 
Lee. Ryusuke Hamaguchi for Drive My Car. And Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. Okay. That's ridiculous. Maybe it was snubbed. That's Maybe ridiculous. It was snubbed. Okay. Oh, that was the year that we watched all of them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Like Nightmare Alley was in Best Picture. <laughs> I like Nightmare Alley a lot. For Best Picture? I, 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 I don't think it should have been I, Best Picture. I like Nightmare Alley. I don't. I think Guillermo del Toro is film. overhyped. Don't look up was Re- best picture. Are as you well. serious? Yep. You think Guillermo del Toro? Yeah, I didn't right. think. I didn't think. Pan's what? Labyrinth is one of the best. Maybe like overall or just like yeah, for I that? Think, no, they give him. They put him. He does. I think maybe. Edge of don't, Water. I don't think water Shape of Water. I don't think. Edge of Water. Shape. It shouldn't have won. Ed, 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 Ed Sheeran. Should have. Should I agree that he should have won best picture. And I don't think Nightmare Alley should have won either. It didn't. No, which it didn't. Yeah. But I feel like anything it's, he makes now, oh, we're just going to put it because it's Guillermo del so. Toro. I think it just... I didn't even think Pinocchio should have won. A best I haven't seen Pinocchio, so I can't speak for it. But I just think that his film style is... It hits an audience that you're just not the target of. Yeah. I think. Because I Oscar feel completely nom- Oscar, the opposite. Oscar uh, voters. Actually, I disagree. I don't even think it's like... I don't even think it's the typical Oscar bait type film. I'm surprised a movie like Nightmare Alley would be nominated. Yeah, me too. Or, 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 or a movie like Pinocchio would even win because usually they go for more, a much more mainstream um, choice for the animated films. Um, Pixar or Disney. Yeah, exactly. Even if it's Cars. Um, I think that he's a phenomenal filmmaker and I think that the types of films he does really resonate with me specifically and I think I think you just I think you just don't click with I don't his type. That's of why film. I think he's overrated. But I don't think he's overrated because I think he's a great director. And I think you can't deny that. Like the directing is phenomenal. I think so, and and he he's an original filmmaker. I, I think it's a that. fresh I'll give you voice. That. I'll give you that. No one's making movies like I can. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. So, and I think he's from that like that class of him and and Denise and uh, and Kuran and like, Inigurutu. Yeah, he's, he's a little ahead of them. You he's know, a he's little started. bit older, yeah. Yeah, but I think that they're they're bringing fresh, yeah. iconic voices to the medium, and and they're not all going to hit. I agree with you. Shape of Water wasn't my bag, yeah, as much as I love Del Toro movies, but but apparently it resonated with somebody because it came out of nowhere. Perverts, sure. Not like bestiality. It's basically Beauty and the Beast with a fish person. So what does that even work? It does. It works. Um, he should win. Oh, Christopher Nolan should win. Christopher oh, okay. <laughs> you don't even know the movies that will be nominated. That's the, the thing we don't months. know because yeah. in December that's when you need to get all those movies. Yeah, but probably not Dune. And going back to the strike, Warner Brothers is going to possibly delay Dune because uh, you know, they're afraid that these movies are going to fail without any promotion since the actors can't go out there and promote the films. <clears throat> How do you guys feel about that? I mean, Studio Ghibli didn't care. Okay. Uh, elaborate on that. They didn't do any promotions for their new movie. Yeah, I heard. And it's out in Japan, right? It's out in Japan, yeah. yeah. I heard it's a masterpiece. Because Miyazaki's an independent director. He don't need no promotion. What's the name of that movie? How Do You Live? But the American version is going to be The Boy and the Heron. Oh, okay. Oh, so, th- so their title's different. I didn't know yeah. that. I thought it was The Boy and the Heron. Okay. Um... Do you, do you think that's a smart choice, delaying the film because of a lack of promotion? I'm, I'm a consumer. I'm not the people making these films. So I, obviously, I, I would like to see it when it's supposed to be coming out. I mean, I will say, like, obviously, different circumstances with the pandemic and all, but postponing No Time to Die, like, five times. Be, like, because the of that, momentum. it was just like I was I was highly anticipated, and then like the constant, the constant like pushing back, pushing back, pushing back. By the time it came out, I enjoyed the film, but I pro- like going into it, I was kind of like, yeah, oh, let's just get this over with because I've been waiting to watch this forever. Yeah, yeah. so if, as long as it's not a situation like that, like I guess, but pushing back just because you can't get people to, like that's the thing. I can't speak to that because I'm not in those meetings. I don't see like those numbers. I don't see how that stuff does. Yeah. You know? 
because it's like yes as a consumer i want to see it now well okay and like but i know that i'm gonna watch it as a consumer also you want these things to succeed because they're supposed to be a dune 3 so as a consumer if we re- if they release dune 2 in a time where it's set up to fail you may not get a dune 3 so the business is not our business that's them to make money who cares if they make money right but it also determines what we get in the future. Like Flash bombing, like we can make jokes about how much it sucks and it's terrible. We're not going to get Batman Beyond. Yeah. And it's a big blow for the studio. They're going to be scrambling to figure out what to do. And there's going to be there's a negative outcome to the consumer with failure, which is why failure should be avoided to begin with. But it was a similar situation. They kept delaying that movie over and over because they were going to maximize, you know, when it would be able to make money and it bombed anyways so in this particular situation i'm pretty sure um part two ends book one yeah the first book yeah i'm okay with that are you okay but i think he has a vision for a third one and he wants to do it and the second book is not bad either it's not bad but at the at the end of the day if it comes to that like you're fine with it, Andy. Yeah. I'm fine with it. There. I think that's a, I think that story is is fine. She want to know what happens to Jason Momoa. We'll tell you after the show. They really? Oh no! Don't tell me. You be want to be surprised. But what do you mean? He? I mean, he died in the first. I don't think movie. so. I thought. I think you're gonna bring him back. They don't show die. They yeah. show. They literally show. No, him they don't. They him. Yes, but he seems like the type of person that can survive that, and we'll see him later on. So that's why I'm like, ooh. Did you see how many times he got stabbed and like got like? No. Yeah, but you, you know, it doesn't you th- kill you people. Think, you think you can survive it that? Does, it, no. does, it doesn't kill people no, to be I've stabbed. Seen, I've seen people, you know, get hurt worse and come back to life. I don't know. Maybe there's a Lazarus pit in this universe where they put him. Oh. Okay. There's already a pit but where the he villain been, but then, showers. Okay, but you're but saying you think he would have died? Huh? But then he would have been dead if he, there's a Lazarus yeah. pit. But I think he's going to come back. I want to okay. see him back. I want to, Is his name Duncan? Yeah. yeah. This is the first time I'm invested in a Jason Momoa character, okay? okay. Oh, because you didn't see Fast X. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I really, like, they got me rooting for this someone I've never really rooted for. Okay. Not even in... What's the name of Ant-Man? No. Ant-Man? <laughs> What? What's a superhero? Aquaman. Aquaman. Not even an Aquaman was I cheering for him. I wasn't cheering for Jason Momoa and Ant Man. I was, I was disappointed in myself for watching that. Yeah, Aquaman. Yeah, we saw it with someone who loved it though. You remember that? We did. Who was it? I don't. Know. We're not gonna say it on air. You don't remember? We'll talk about it later. Anyways, I remember they gave us a Pitbull song. So, I remember ten we, out of ten. We turned to the person next to us and they were like, "That movie was amazing." That was awesome. We watched it together. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. I don't know if I was with you. Yeah, I think you were. Le- uh, some TV. Oh, a lot of people, maybe they don't have time. Maybe oh, wait, wait. Let's, let's 9.5. Oh, we were 9.5? 9.5 as well. I forgot what we were talking Bar- about. Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Like Barbenheimer. 8 in your faces. I can, get, I can see a 9.7, <laughs> but I'm going 9.5. I, I could go up. Okay. Watch Oppenheimer. I could go up also because I haven't seen the first 15 minutes of the movie. That's just <laughs> <laughs> they were good. Ah, so you missed that sex scene, eh? No, that's not in the first 15 minutes. Definitely he doesn't know that. that. He doesn't know also, that. So the show's PG-13, so we prefer love scene. Yeah. That baby really? making scene. Um, I don't think that was the intent. The first 15 minutes, I started narrating, like typing to him what was happening on screen. And then my wife hit me so hard. That I was like, abort, abort. You're on your own. <laughs> I was like, exterior shot. <laughs> Drops. <laughs> Hit the water. Yeah. Close up. <laughs> Killian Murphy. Tries to, kill his, tries to kill his teacher. <laughs> Someone was saying like his, his grandson was complaining that that scene depicted him as an evil person. Uh, okay. But then, but like, then, someone, no said, oh, but then someone said, oh, he kind of dropped the atomic bomb. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, first of all, I think his it was intentions very, were to nah, kill the someone. Quote, the quote, the quote was like he, there's like, that's like revisionist history. Like, you, there's no proof that he poisoned an apple, tried to kill his teacher. He got in trouble for it. At yeah, school. his dad had to come. That's what the family yeah, that, said. That's not true. I mean, it's he said he did it and he got in trouble for it. Yeah, his dad it, had to come and help him out. Yeah, that's a piece of history. I don't understand. Like, oh, where's the no proof? 
like there is a moment later on in his life where he like says that he did it again and everybody's like what but it was actually a story from the past you'll see it it's like chapter three how far are you? Of the book. i'm in chapter five of the book that's the other thing this movie drove us to all want to start reading the book so after three hours and so much information crammed, i want to know more mm -hmm. so we got american prometheus right away and i'm about five uh chapters in i'm so in chapter far. zero baby you really need to all right start it up all right transition we don't always have money and time to go out to the movies, so we're at home watching TV. What is some summer TV that maybe uh, our audiences can catch up with? The Bear. The Bears. We had this argument because your brother, Link, said The Bear was the best show on TV. I agree with him. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then I couldn't think of anything. No, yeah. The Bear is the best show on I TV. I think it is the best show on television. Yeah. What were some shows that might have been in that conversation prior? Ted, Ted Lasso and Miss Maisel. Ted Lasso. Miss Maisel is no longer in that conversation because it's over now. So I accept that. Ted Lasso is no longer in this conversation it's because over. maybe it's over. And also this season wasn't as strong as like the yeah. best show on TV um, title. The, but if it was. The last of But if it was. What? But if it was, well, what's Lasso the best show on TV? Uh, if Ted Lasso was... And Maisel. I'd go with The Bear. Oh, no. For me, it's Miss Maisel. Miss Maisel is a better show than Ted Lasso. I'm sorry. I'd go with The Bear. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm saying with Bear included as well. With Bear included? I think Miss Maisel might be my favorite show on TV. The Bear. But it's not on TV anymore. Bear's so my I favorite, I think. The bear, yeah. The Bear's excellent. Yeah. And I think, you know what? At the end of the day, what your favorite show might have to do with the topic... Because Ted Lasso, at its height, when it was, quote unquote, the best show on TV, obviously I care more about, like, you know, performance and stage craft than I do about soccer. So it's amazing a show like that can wrap me into its topic, but I'm going to lean into this one. Um, I love food. So the bear is amazing. And it's not the show you would expect it to be, I think. I thought the bear would be a little more of a downer as an effect show. And I think there's always like hope at the end of I think there's, almost every episode. I think there's like little, stuff. little like, you know, pieces of hope like that shine through. Like, cause it is like, so, it's like, it's like life, you know, it's people going through hard times and dealing with issues. And that first season, like, yeah, for the really most quick, part, it's pretty you, much of a Why don't you summarize the show in like a, in a uh, sentence or two for anyone who doesn't know what the bear is? A bear becomes a chef. That's not what the show is about. There's lots of yelling. It's like a, it, also, you know what it is? The, fr the show is like you are inside of a pressure cooker. But what is the show about? Cooking. It's about this. A very, <clears throat> a very talented. Um, and successful. And successful chef. Um, Two star. Michelin, Michelin star. Michelin star. star. Yeah. Um, basically leaves his position. His high position up here. His like position is probably the best in the, probably the best restaurant in the world. Um, to... To basically put new life into his um, brother's restaurant. His dead brothers? You're not going to say that. Failing. I mean, uh, his brother. It was his cafeteria, basically. Basically. It's like a little, it's like it's a little a sandwich, sandwich shop. shop on the side of the road that's to... like, you know, super insanitary, not making a lot of money, pretty old. Um, and then he tries to, you know, bring it back to life. Did you say super unsanitary? Yeah. Yeah, isn't yeah, it funny how those kind of places are like they're so grimy and like but they do well. Food People the like them, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 someone with incredible talent trying to build a culture. I think that's, that's a what good grabs way of building a culture. Build a culture. With build a, a culture, but also with have a ragtag team of people that don't know anything about the restaurant business at at, at his at his level. Yeah. I think it's people that like passionate people that just don't have like the direction. Yeah. Like that haven't had like, you know, that, that course to go through to, or the training or and stuff like that. They just kind of ended up that job. They're kind of, they're pretty good at what they do, but they haven't had that opportunity to like go to the next level or they didn't know that they even wanted to. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. They don't even know what the next level even looks like. It's a world that they're not aware of, which is so interesting because I thought going into the show, it would be kind of like the movie Chef, where you take that like high, elevated, 
like culinary art and you bring it down to the everyday and it's anti-chef it's yeah it's the reverse it's taking the like everyday kitchen and elevating into an art form which i think was a very interesting journey for a lot of the characters and for us as the audience and then season two, i think season one obviously they're they're a going through their issues yeah. and and it's it's a it's a very good origin story season two, season two it's like it you start level. yeah you start really like they start to spread their wings and it is a bit more hopeful and for everyone yeah except him which i think is the point i think yeah as the main character he he has this you know illusion of something that he never really had he gave up pretty much relationships if you're like he gave up relationships to be really good at what he yeah. what he did like he kind of just figured Sacrifice. i have like yeah this is okay i'm fine with this i'm fine with like never finding happiness and then he gets a taste of happiness um no, don't give away too much yeah bro. yeah bro sure he gets a taste of happiness and we'll see how that ends up. If you haven't seen this show, The Bear, I highly recommend season one and two. If you're afraid that it's too much to catch up, I had not seen season one. I had put it off. So I binge watched them both back to back. They're only about 10 you episodes. finished that in a weekend. Yeah, they're only about 10 episodes each, and they're, it's a half hour show. Mostly. Yeah, and then season two has a couple episodes that go a little longer. But yeah. And there's one episode. Of I think one. this is the first show or movie I've seen where they use a Taylor Swift song so perfectly. <laughs> Okay. So just because of that, go watch it. That, that's if that's enough for you. Whatever gets if you through Swifty, the door. If you're a Swifty, this is the best use of a Taylor Swift song. I've whatever ever seen. gets you through the door. I thought I saw it in another movie recently. It's becoming more. And more. Yeah, but it's not as good as this Who? one. Who? Yeah, Taylor Swift. Oh. Um. Okay. Really quick before we go. Any recommendations? Unless there's something else you need to talk about. Um. I got some TV that I saw that I'm going to recommend. I don't know about you guys. Go ahead. Okay. I saw My Adventures with Superman. What the is that? The whole thing or just like the t- first two episodes? The first four episodes. Oh, okay. The fifth one is out now. I'm going to watch it later today. Uh, it just came out. So the first four episodes, the show is good enough. Yeah, after four episodes, check this show out. It's basically a Superman anime. If you're into anime, check it out. If you're into Superman, check it out. If you're not into both of those things, Animated? give it a shot. No, it's an, it's it's anime style, but it's not anime. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. Is it done by Americans Can or you Japanese? I, you have to look it up. Can you fact? You're a fact an, checker. I'm gonna say animated. You're just gonna say it. You're just gonna say it without any idea. It's, yeah. I I don't think it's done it's by. American it's not. Studio. It's not. It's not dubbed. That doesn't I mean. You <laughs> asked who animated it. Keep explaining. It. Thank it's you. Subbed. So basically, it's a fresh take on Superman. It's very optimistic, very hopeful. It's a uh, it re the reason why I say it's very anime too, especially is because it reinterprets the Superman villains in like as like anime archetypes. So you're you're gonna think you know where the story's going, and it's gonna kind of shift them into anime tropes, which sounds bad, but is actually really good. What are you turned around scared at? What are you looking at? Your cat's paw was under the door, okay. like trying to come in. He can't come in. I know. The- but it's you just know how playing. scary your cats That's, are to me. There's no reason why you should be scared of like. Yeah, it's like a horror movie. Fifteen. A uh, what movie? Yeah, horror movie. That's what it felt like. It was like. Oh, oh. Are oh, you saying horror? Horror. 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 Okay. horror. 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 Anyways, my adventures with Superman on Max, the app. Uh, check it out. It's definitely worth. Did you find out who made it? Uh, it's a South Korean. It's not even uh, anime. Studio. Okay. It's anime. Is that a real thing? <laughs> you <just made> that <laughs> Korean anime is anime. Not it's anime. Okay, so it would fall in the character. It would fall in the category of Avatar: The Last Airbender. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, so we're in the same. We're, yeah, because uh, they controversial. They, they yeah. were. They worked on that as well. Oh, they are the people who made Avatar. I mean, they're the animated. Avatar? Yeah. Oh, how about that? Is that a selling point? It's the animators of Avatar. Mm-hmm. No, no, I was gonna watch it no matter what. No, I know, but so. Is it a selling up. point? And the fourth season of The Boondocks. Oh, <laughs> Regina King. I love that show. All right. So that's, uh, that's my recommendation. Am I allowed a second one? Or? Go Whatever ahead. you want. I'm, I'm, se- I'm just going to say The Bear. So. All right. I'm seven episodes into Twisted Metal. It's stupid. It's big. It's dumb. It's fun, I think. 
I was like, let me check it out. I thought I was only going to watch the first episode and then be like, this show is horrible. I made it to seven and I'm finished it today. It's only been out for a day. So obviously I had a lot of free time. It's not like I'm not going to say, oh, you're going to want to binge this right away. But Twisted Metal is Zombieland. Uh, but Mad Max. If Zombieland is the stupid version of Walking Dead, this is the stupid version of Mad Max. So that's my pitch for Twisted Metal. With Samoa Joe. Yeah, Samoa Joe boom, is in boom, it. Boom, boom. It has a really good cast, actually. Uh, Anthony Mackie, who you guys hate, right? Oh, I mean, I think Gabriel does, not me. Oh, okay. I thought you support his. Um, I do support Gabriel's hate. It has um, that uh, half Colombian chick from Brooklyn Nine Nine. What's her name? That she's the voice of Mirabel. Mirabel. Yeah. Stephanie mm -hmm. Beatrice. Mm -hmm. Stephanie Beatrice. Yes, thank you. Uh, she's she's not Twisted Metal. She is Twisted Metal. Um, is that the name of the character? The no, Twisted Metal is just because it's it's a car no, racing we, weapon. Do we know what the name of the character is? Of her? No, character? no, the Maybe. Samoa yeah, Joe. Sweet Tooth. Okay. Sweet Tooth is is played by Samoa Joe and voiced by Will Arnett, and he's actually he's Ooh, a scene stealer. That's pretty good. Yeah, he's a scene stealer. Uh, Thomas Hayden Church. Samoa is Samoa Joe it? and Will Arnett. I think that was it. Oh my gonna goodness! Be yeah, in the what, that's the best tag team. Now right I'm there. trying to think of. Who. Who else I can play there? I've made you a say? huge mistake, Michael. Thomas Hayden Church is really good. I oh, like yeah. him. Sa Michael. Sandman from the uh, Spider-Man. Spider Hermano. Uh, so I think it's worth checking out. It's fun if you have, if you want to throw something on in the background while you work or something, something you don't have to pay a ton of attention to. So those are my two recommendations. My Adventures with Superman and Twisted Metal. If you're into the PlayStation games and you've seen that, you don't need to know anything, obviously, because, but, um, it's fun. It's fun. It's a fun game adaptation. They found a clever way of adapting a series that really has no rights to be a TV show. Like it's a car racing game, mm -hmm. car combat racing game. So let's hit the bear. The bear. And I still have to finish the second half of the final. Se oh, not the final. The final season that Henry Cavill is playing the Witcher. Oh, okay. Um, and then the show's over, right? No. Might as well be no, over. No, we should just we should just acknowledge that the show is over. Might as well be Probably. over. You don't got that sexy man as Witcher anymore. We, What's I, the point? How do we feel about uh, Liam Hemsworth? He ain't no Henry Cavill, and he, I've never even I seen mean, the show. I mean, he isn't, but I think everyone deserves a fair shot. No. I, I have to see how they end it because I I need to know how that's going to make sense. Don't no, there is a. I heard there is going to be a canon reason for why he changes. Yeah, I think I know what it is, but I need to see it. Okay. Oh, so it'll happen this season? Yeah. Like, I know, I know like why. tomorrow. I know why. Today. Oh, today. today. Yeah, today. I know They why. dropped it today. So a couple days ago. Yeah. Time travel. True. So The Witcher and The Bear. All right, Link. For me, I got into the show late, but go watch Detroiters on Paramount+. Plus. If you need to watch it, I got you with an account. Gabe will pay for it. We're good. <laughs> that, that, please don't password share. In fact, we all pay for our own. We've established this. We all this. pay. We each individually have accounts. We do not share Paramount Plus. No, actually, I think we said we can't watch Paramount Plus because, but I guess you do. So when is that Netflix thing gonna hit us? It hit already months ago. Actually, no, I've been watching Netflix. I, sh why would you say that out loud? Um, it has already been deployed. I mean, I haven't. It seen... hasn't affected some users for reasons that have escaped me. And I have gone into the account settings and checked if they're charging for extra users or not. And they are, clearly. Ah. Uh, uh, now I know why, because I'm set as a home console of the account. Can you so stop that's doing why I'm that? able just, to watch. By the way, I'm pretty sure you got set as the home console um, on, on that other network that we may or may not share because you just press A when you open up an app that first without time, reading. But that yeah. was during the pandemic. Yeah. But you've... And I was close enough to that other house that it was okay. Okay. All right. So anyways, uh, Detroiters, anything Detroiters. else? Go watch it, man. It's a hilarious show if you like stupid comedy. If you're a fan of Sam Richardson like I am because of Veep, I really recommend it. Oh, it's been a while, actually. Right? I don't think I've made this record. Beef on Netflix. Beef. Oh, yeah. It has been a while. I haven't had a chance to I don't, see it. I don't think I mentioned really that, that good? before. I thought it was great. Really quick, one sentence. What's it about? Because I have no idea. Road Rage. Okay. Okay. Thought it was about cooking. I thought it was about cannibalism, which no. is why I didn't watch it. <laughs> Bris no, brisket. Like, I have beef with you. Yeah, I, I, I understand you get it? that. Now. You get it? Yeah. So, um, so no one eats the meat. Pause. 
Yeah. Okay. So who do you think, Link, you came up with this. I don't know if you want to. Oh, yeah. So my question is, who do you guys think won the summer? Like, if we're going to... We're going to give the summer a king and a queen. Who do you think? This could be a person, a studio, you well, I, know. I don't think it's a studio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actor, author, you know. For me, for example, you guys know what I mean, I mean by this. To me, I think Nintendo won the summer because oh. they released um, Tears of the Kingdom, which I think is the best game of the summer. So, oh, possibly all time. All time, yeah. So I think what they did for that May, June. Have you finished it? No, not at all. Me neither. But I, I, I think they won the summer with Tears of the Kingdom. I'm three out of five sages. I'm four out of four. Okay. But they're all oh, their stuff. Oh, what? <laughs> Is it in the depths? Hate the depths. I think maybe. Like going down the... <laughs> I can either confirm the or... The upside or down. Okay. So you think Nintendo won. I heard Pikmin 4 is great. Yeah. And Pikmin 4 is Pikmin 4. <laughs> That's what it is. Gabe, who do you think won the summer? I think we won. Okay. Wow. What? Why? Because I got Mission Impossible, Barbie, and Oppenheimer okay. in the span yeah. of two weeks. I think consumers ended up winning. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Which and the always, bear. Which is always good. I can't think of anything but losers, and I can't help but think of the Flash and Secret Invasion. We didn't <laughs> even talk about I don't, Secret Invasion. Mm-hmm. Let's not. I've never seen it. Don't. Well, then go on to. No, I, to be honest, I think the I think the highs beat out the lows this summer. Yeah. I think July was a great, yeah, a great month for movies. I think the highs beat out yeah. because I got even like on the TV front, I still got Second Season of the Bear and that was fantastic. Mm. I think I've just TV's just been well, there's a lot of TV now. It's TV. But right? I think the the select things that I saw were were great. Ted Lasso and Miss Maisel ending around the same time. Um, oh, it has been a good year. The me. Bear. It's been, yeah. I think it's been been really good. Mando. Oh. Um, <laughs> that so was as, this year? Yeah. So as far as like, you know, things that sucked, eh, whatever. It is what it is. I think I'm becoming more like Link where I was like, I'm not. If I really think something is going to be that bad, I'm not going to watch it. Because you don't have a choice. You don't have any time. That's also true. You don't have time to waste. That's also true. All right, I'm going to go with Gabe then. I think we won this summer. Yes, yes. Especially because we're going to be taking off. So this is the season finale for season two of Searching for MacGuffin. We will see you again. Did we tell them what? Yeah, September 5. We come back September 5 with a whole new season. Why does that number keep changing? You said, what is no, it? it's September 5. Oh, okay. Because you had said 7 before. Because you put 7. Oh, so that's my mistake. Yeah. I apologize. I, we, we forgive you. But yeah, we're coming back s- September 5, a whole new season, whole new guests. Right, right, right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That's, that's, that's right. That's the plan. And we're, we hope you enjoy your summer. Keep on watching Danny and Link play Stardew Valley. And enjoy what you have now, because you might not have it for a while. Boom, 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 hmm. boom. Hags. That's my sign off. Season three. Top guys out.